looking at his toys that have been placed on a shelf. He notices a green fairy and afterwards stands in the study room window. Renzia was also keeping an eye on him and had already loaded his weapon. He covers his face with a mask and comes closer to his target. He hides his face behind the mask so that no one can see him in the cameras. To deceive the security guard, he sets a phone at the door. In the film's first scene, a man named Renzia stops his car in front of a mansion. Renzia arrives to take the life of a wealthy man. In essence, that man is the CEO of a multi-million dollar toy firm. The man is pictured sitting in the storeroom, looking at his toys that have been placed on a shelf. He notices a green fairy and afterwards stands in the study room window. Renzia was also keeping an eye on him and had already loaded his weapon. He covers his face with a mask and comes closer to his target. He hides his face behind the mask so that no one can see him in the cameras. To deceive the security guard, he sets a phone at the door. On the table, he notices a painting. This was the person who died in the photo. There was also a note on it, which he ignored. He is shown enjoying the plane and informs his client that the murder has been completed successfully. The traveler inquires about the clue, but is taken aback when he discovers a green fairy in his suitcase. She believes a grown guy is bringing his toys home with him. Renzia arrives at the airport, and word of the murder has gone throughout the city. He discovers a girl with a doll-like doll that has been placed in the room of a toy company's president. He doesn't think about it, but it makes him feel strange. Later, he notices another toy, which he remembers seeing in the room of the person he killed. When he gets home, he sets the green fairy down on the table. He has a lot of other things, and he likes to take things from the people they murder. He was exhausted and slept on the couch. While responding to his emails, he sleeps. The doorbell rings at midnight, and he wakes up. He sees through the front door but does not open it. There was a box carried by a receptionist. The receptionist exits because he does not open the door. He brings the box into his residence. He places it on the kitchen counter, with a letter containing center information written on it. He is unaware of the center's existence. The signature was identical to the one on the mother's photograph of the man he killed. Renzia wanted to toss it as far as she could, but she was also interested. He chooses to open the box and gently removes the wrapper. It was a toy box with a lot of toys inside. That box had the words surprise bonus inscribed on it. Renzia carefully examines it, concluding that it may contain bomb-like items or be a trap. He looks for something similar but doesn't find it, so he opens the box. Inside the box were plastic soldiers with rifles, tanks, and helicopters. He looked through the box and saw nothing odd. This box falls from the kitchen counter late at night, yet he remembers it wasn't on the edge. What caused it to fall? When he doesn't discover any soldiers in the box, he is taken aback. He has no idea where they've gone. Strange things started happening with it, such as the curtains moving and the light flashing on its own. When Renzia realizes the wire is missing, a soldier attacks his foot. Renzia has deduced that the soldiers are to blame. As soon as he bends down, the soldiers fire rounds at him. They're small, but they're doing a lot of work. He immediately moves behind them, but when he gets close enough, they attack him with an explosive. His pent is burned by the explosive. He rushes to the washroom to get away from them. He discovers that his knee has been wounded and that he has numerous bullets lodged in his skin. He doesn't want to be seen in front of those soldiers, so he examines their actions in the mirror. The soldiers were destroying the living room's lights and bulbs. As a result, there will be darkness everywhere, and when they see him in his mirror, they will assault him. Renzia returns to his room and reloads his revolver. He intends to use his gun to terrify those miniature warriors. Later, he took his gun from the kitchen cupboard and started shooting at everything. For a brief moment, there was silence, and when the opportunity presented itself, Renzia took the cushion from the sofa. As a result, the soldiers will not be able to conceal. When the soldiers were silent and there was no noise, he turned the couch. He discovers a slew of soldiers' bodies under the couch. The troops who had survived were assisting the others. Many of them assisted others in boarding the jeep. All of this was visible to Renzia, but he couldn't believe his eyes. He tries to stop the soldiers by putting his foot on them, but they fire back. He also shoots at them, and his one bullet has put an end to many of them. Three army toy helicopters merge under the table and move toward him, indicating that the attack isn't ended yet. Inside, the toys launch cannonballs at him. They were launching little missiles at him. 
Renzia, who is terrified, enters the washroom and sees herself in the mirror. He has numerous wounds on his body and face, which he treats with alcohol. He tends to his wounds before a chopper arrives and blasts a hole in the door. The helicopter continued to assault, but Renzia grabbed it with a towel and flushed it down the toilet. The soldiers were not going down without a fight. Later, he uses a hairdryer to try to put an end to them. He submerges the hairdryer in the water, and the soldiers perish. He decides to spend the night in the restroom. Because he was injured, this was critical for his safety. After some time has passed, he notices a soldier. From outside the room, he throws him a note. The note had the words surrender inscribed on it. The intelligence of those soldiers astounds Renzia. He writes a response on the paper and signs it screw before sending it. He notices a bunch of troops preparing to attack him with their tank in the shadows. While punching a hole in the door, the group begins attacking him. There was bombardment all around him, and he had to flee. He jumps out the window but is unable to flee due to his location on the 14th floor. He begins to walk gently towards the balcony. Meanwhile, he is attacked by another chopper. The helicopter crashes after Renzia fires at them. He reaches the balcony after crashing it. When he gets there, he relaxes. The soldiers had been expecting him to return. They've aimed their weapons at the window. Renzia devises a scheme to divert their attention with robot ducks. He was being watched by the military, so he attacked them from behind. This group was attempting to flee, but their attention was diverted by another group. They were also aiming their guns at him. Renzia starts a fire with a lighter and a spray, then extinguishes it all. Later, he furiously splits them into multiple sections with a knife. Then he turns around and throws a massive box at the group he lit on fire. He puts an end to them, and the troops eventually die. He counts the soldiers because he believes they are all dead. He also counts how many of them there are in the box. He was becoming ecstatic as he matched the number with which I had terminated all of the soldiers. He now wishes to relax, but he has forgotten about the bonus surprise. It was written on the back of the box. Renzia takes a dip in the pool to unwind. Then, in the water, someone injures his wrist. He emerged from the water with a swollen wrist. It was imperative that his wound be bandaged as quickly as possible in order to save his life. With a thread and needle, he begins to repair his wounds. Later, he decides to leave the house in order to avoid being attacked by the military. He had no idea that the problem will follow him to the elevator. Because the light goes out and the button panel breaks, Renzia is unable to open the elevator door. He switches on the flashlight and looks around. There was no one else there, so he uses the flashlight to look about. He notices a commando, who is a toy commando fleeing a chopper. Renzia also wished to move behind him but was unable to do so. He got stuck in an elevator and was filmed hopping from one elevator to the next. He travels to another elevator after removing the ceiling panel. He had the impression that the commander would not come here now, and that he would be safe. His joy does not last long, as he notices the commando has arrived while pursuing him. This commando toy was repeatedly stabbing him with a dagger. Because it was a toy, Renzia was not harmed. Renzia manages to keep the commando inside the elevator door. The commando's head is crushed by the door. It dies, and Renzia is relieved that the commando is over. He takes its body in his hands and smiles as he sees it.